Hi guys, welcome back to part two of um, Thursday Live. I thought I'd work um, in pastels. So this is pastel and it's, I think it's set and it's also, well, it might not be set, but I've blended it with a blending tool. So I was going to blend it with, these are my blending tools. And I have them in this PK, um, SK, PTSKY huge pencil case and that has the removable sleeves. So I have a vintage set of pastels from Derwent, which are slight a millimetre thicker. And then I have my the new sets. If you buy them now from Derwent, this is what you get. They're all P140. The original ones are 1 to 30, um, F, D and B. Uh, which is for bold, faint, and dense, I think it means. Uh, so that's what I wanted to do today because there's certain books that are a bit thinner. And I also want to, I like to kind of um, match colours up a bit better. And I like working with pastels and it's, again, quite easy to do. Um, it's not it's not difficult to do. Um, again, it's very similar to the other, just touch a little bit of colour and then manipulate it where you want. So the the, the original vintage set of, of pastels from Derwent, I find to be slightly softer, so I prefer them. Um, I don't think I'm going to blend today. I think I'm just going to use them with um, a brush, with a rigor brush, um, because it's, again, it's a touch and go method that work quite well. And this is quite thin paper, is this? It's not very thick paper. Um, so I think I probably will be better doing it like that. I'm not going to do this page um, because this is in my vintage set. So I'll unclip, so you might hear a clatter. I'm going to unclip two sleeves. So we've got P010. Um, so basically, I have they're, they're actually in order. So if they were in my uh, flippy book, that's the colours. Turn them over, and then on this side, I've got the rest of them to here. And as you can see, the vintage are a couple of millimetres thicker, and you can see that they're slightly softer, and a millimetre of um, strip of colour. Is, is slightly smaller as well. But apart from that, the colors are very similar, even though they've kind of split these up into, into kind of French gray, and there's three French grays. Here we've got French gray, aluminum gray, and, um, and a blue gray. So if you look at them, they're very kind of similar, but they're just called different names. I do prefer the vintage set. Um, you can still get when I was watching one on you on eBay. It's just gone for one hundred and nine pounds because they they're very far and few between. I paid a hundred for mine, but I've seen them go for fifty. Um, I do prefer the vintage set because they are soft and they're easier to blend. Um, so I didn't think I could get. I didn't think I could get a book to sit actually on the thing, but I might have done some. This is what I wanted to do. Um, tender full ends. So I think I'm going to take that one off. I haven't, I've just found all my colour books. I've forgotten where they are. They're on the other side. So let's see if we can slide this one. I may not be able to get it on because it's too thick. zoom out a little bit and I'll move the camera slightly so that I'm not touching it every five minutes. Oh hi Dalla, we're back. This is part two. Let's see if I can play with the camera a little bit so I could 
Oops, let me zoom in one. And I just play with the the auto focus. Oh, there's the elf master fuddling around. <laughs> so I think we want to be another one in, don't we? Tap another one in. That's better. She is quite cute. I don't think I need this, but I'll just pop it over there. Just see if we can just keep that shut. It might be this one that we need to shut. Let's just get this one. Trap that down there. Move that slightly. So she's quite a cute deer. And again, it's a big space. So I always have problems with backgrounds, but I don't when I've got my pastels. Now, I think I should be okay with the pastels because we can see what colours they are. So I'm going to blend them with the three riggers, the same three riggers. I think I'm going to blend them with the same three riggers. Um, that's the biggest one, except for this space here. Um, yeah, because you see, this is quite a small space. That is quite a small space. If you want a highlight on every single little little berry. Um, so I'll start in the middle. I may not get her fur done because it's just a bit difficult. I'm just going to see if I can get some water in there. So I've still got my little pot working in the same way. About a tablespoon of water, a baby wipe. And three riggers that dunk and draw back over a baby wipe, and you get your lovely points. Um, I might just do her, fl her flowers first and the crown. So um, I might think of bright colors this time. I'm not sure. We've got vanilla, uh, zinc yellow, process yellow, deep cadmium. Um, I think this is quite a nice one, but I've got my pencil shot there. There it is. So I've got this um, pencil sharpener, and it's a, a, a comb, oh, something or other. And it has, I forgot what it's called now, and it's got, I've lost the plastic thing off the top. And it's got number one and number two. Now, number one takes the strip off instead of doing it with your knife. So it basically leaves the colour alone and just takes this off. And then the number two makes it a very sharp point. Um, but I'm not going to do that because it's pure colour and I'm not, I don't want to waste any. So I've got the strip that I want. And I do have, I don't have a point, but I have a sharp edge there so I can be quite precise so um, I can put some color down here and again this is a pastel but I'm not going to blend it I'm going to blend it with um, in fact I might just try Putting some white in there actually. I don't normally do this, but we'll try this. Um, and then I need a, a deeper colour here for a, a bit of a shadow. So I've never done this before in this particular way. So that would be a smaller square. That's a bigger square. So I'm going to use a 10-0, the quite small one, to start with. Oh, hi, May. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. So activate this. And basically what we've made is a watercolour. And then stroke that back down. 
And what you find is that when that's dry, and you, you probably need a bigger water pot because we are picking up colour. So we pick this colour up. We're making it. That brush isn't big enough, actually. It might have to be the bit bigger brush, this one. So we'll activate this. And what you're doing is catching all those bits of dust. And then exactly in the same way, stroking that up there. And you don't normally use white, but it is there just to give that lovely white highlight. So it's working slightly different. We're actually using most of the and we're putting different colors down so we've got a darker color now we actually activated that color so i don't have to put a bit more here i love working with the pencils you can blend them with a the blending tool but i find that my hands work hurt after a while but this way, they don't hurt. But you can get a nice watercolour effect. Zoom in a bit and see if we can see that slightly better. So I'm going to do the flowers next. And what we've done is we've set, we've set it by, by wetting the pastel, we don't need to spray it because we've set it with water. So it's always good if you've got asthma or anything. So that's always a good thing. So I'm going to look at the, the bright colours. What can I use for um, the flowers? So she's going to be a fawn coloured doe. And uh, yeah, so uh, marigold looks quite nice. Um, tomato is quite a nice color. Raspberry is a nice color. Now they could be raspberries or they could be blackberries. Um, I think I'm going to do them blackberries. So I'm tempted. Oh no, I've got a mush. I've got a toadstool here. I think I'm going to do raspberry color for that. So the other way I do this is I work in threes. I just remember that's what I've done there. Um, so I've got a main colour, a lighter colour and a darker colour. Um, and I did that with the oil the oil pastels as well when I did the streamathon. So I think I'm tempted to use three colours. So if I was using my vintage set, it would be easy because there are three colours that go together. So I've got to guess these. Um, if we've got dark purple and red, maybe a, a, an orange here, ready red. So I've got I've got three colours in a row here, which are quite nice. But I want to kind of take three colours next to each other on the wheel. So we've got yellow, orange, and red, or we've got red, orange, red, purple. So I think orange, red, purple. So I've got spectrum orange, um, cadmium red and um there's a maroon which is quite out but there's a crimson so they they will be next to each other on the color wheel and i'm going to try that so the palest one is on the outside So these should be slightly stronger colours. These they're not going to be as pale, even though the rigger is doing the exact same thing. Because we're putting these are very strong. Pastels have less binder than any watercolour. Their binder is slightly different, but there's always more pigment in in a pastel. So then I'm going to put a little bit of this in the middle. So these should be really strong colours, and I love pastel pencils. Again, I'm a bit of a Derwent nut. And then the darkest one in the middle. 
and I think we could have gone a bit darker than that, but never mind. We should have quite a nice little blend. Obviously, it's going to be easier with a point. Um, so then I need to take the medium-sized brush, I think, this time. Yeah, the medium-sized brush, draw it back. So I've done all the pastels for those flowers so I can put them away. Uh, and as I said, I do love this way of working because you put them in and you can turn them back round and they sit really nicely in here. Now, I haven't used mine a lot recently, so I don't know how they but they seem to be quite firm and I've had them a while. I'm just going to pop those away for a minute. Again, you could do all the colours and then go in with the brush, but this is now loose pastel. So you need a piece of tracing paper or kitchen or grease proof paper in between because those colours will transfer across. So you've got the choice of, of how to use them. But the easiest way, again, we start on the outside, activate that colour and then work inwards to get that really nice deep colour. Now, I need to come out every time. Now, that's a bit of a big brush is that so I'm going to go smaller and every petal will be different because every shape I got was different and um, I am actually going to go to the medium the medium so touch the outside and then push that cut underneath so we've got a nice bit of a highlight. You can do all the inside if you want. Depends on how light and how dark your colours are. So I kind of like that actually. But remember, we've picked quite a lot of colour now, so I need to get rid of that. And I started on it. Got to start on the palest, otherwise you will lose the pale colour. And they blend to a lovely, they're not going to blend those out there, so they can be just blended in normal. And then we start on the outside, and you still get a lovely effect. Unlike the ink tens, these will blend to nothing. You won't get any hard lines because the binder is so there's not much binder you've got a lot of pigment in a pastel and you get some really nice effects so again we go on the outside of that one I kind of like that orange tint, it's just quite nice. It's, it's that size for there, but it'll be fine. Pick the outside and then tease that in. Every time I'm cleaning the brush and dragging it back onto a baby wipe so we're getting rid of all, all colour. We just want a barely damp brush. If you work too wet, you'll get a bubble. And again, you can do this for a long time because It doesn't hurt your hands because all the bounce is in the brush. And you get some quite nice effects. I'm going to use a sm slightly smaller brush because I want the more delicate brush, the more delicate blend. Uh, 
And then we could think what the little white things are. They are. Um, there's some nice leaves. So I'll look for my greens. Now you can see your greens quite well. Oops, no, that's the wrong one. You can see the greens quite well on this one. So, um, oops, upside down. So we've got an emerald green, a uh, green oxide, a uh, pea green, which is very pale. So I think that would be dark. So the shamrock, uh, the forest green, I think I'm going to do on there. So this one could be, there's a shamrock green, looks quite nice. I think I'll use, um, and we have an olive, we have a dark olive and an olive. So again, we've got some nice colours for, maybe the olives would be better there. And I'll use forest green on that one. So again, I'm going to put a bit of colour here. And I've let Mr. Petal. There's a petal there, so I wondered if I could pick some colour up to see if we can pick some colour up and put it in there. Pick a little bit of colour up. So if I put um, this pale on the top there. Can blend these two together now. So we get the pale one and then go in for the the darker one. Again, this isn't a rush job. This is just slow and steady. Take the dark down and then. The green, that if you want to take that back up, you can do. And then we've got those little bubbles. I don't know what to do with those. I think the middle, I'm going to do. Um, oh, I could either do yellow. I could do a yellow colour or I could do a dark red colour for the centres. I think I'm going to do maroon. I think I'm going to do maroon. And again, the smallest brush. And they don't, this doesn't need blending now. It's technically become a watercolour. Although it's not a watercolour, it's technically become a watercolour and it's set. And it's a lot better. Oh, hi, Marilyn. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. Anybody else popping in? Hola. Else popping in. Hi, May. Anybody else I've missed? I'm having a play with my Derwent pastel pencils that I've not had out for a while. Um, in um, I always forget this lady's name. Uh, Carla Mar Markova. Um, so I'm not sure what to do with those again because I'm not sure I'm going to leave it. I do want to get on with the, the blackberries. So I usually do threes. So I'm looking through the purples. And these are quite good because the one thing about the pastel pencils is the colour on the end is the colour you get. It is, it is, um, it is Maxillon, it is. It is. Um, 
So it's not like the ink tense pencils. Um, when you look at these colors, all these beautiful colors, you will get these colors. See, I don't need, um, you've got to show the darks a bit better, but I've got the chocolates and the darks here, and then I've got the grays and the other ones on the other side. So I've, I've worked it out that the, um, there's a dioxidine purple and French ultramarine, but at this side, um, I've got pale violet, uh, the pale violet colors, and then I've got purples on the other side. So I've worked out that that's how it works best for me. Um, and they are in color order as well. So it's very good because you look at the end here and then you can work across and that's the pale pink you're gonna get. And it only works with pastels because there's so little binder and so much pigment. That's what you see. You see your pigment and your pigment is your color. So they're very good for that. You don't need to scratch color or anything. You can see most things. Now I think dioxidine purple is going to be my main color for my blackberries. But I also want, um, I'm going to use flesh. Oh, I've got a pale pink actually. I've got a pale pink, but it actually looks a movie pink. And, and I want to, um, the, the one I use, I don't know if it's in here. Yes, indigo. Now, when I do a purple, uh, I have a, a system that when I want a shadow, if it's watercolors, oils, acrylics, um, pencil, anything, I have a system. So if I'm using a blue or a green, or a purple. I use indigo, which is a very, very dark, cold blue for my shadows. When I'm using a red or a pink or an orange, I will use burnt carmine, which is a very dark purple, but it's a red purple. And when I use um, browns, anything brown, or black, and I don't tend to use black, but greys or anything like that. I use sepia, which is a very, very dark brown, almost a black brown. And that works for, for greys and for, and for other colours and browns. That's my shadow. So if it's a bark and there's a bit of dark, that's what I use. So that's the three colours that I use for shadow. Um, so I've got a pale pink, but it is actually a purple pink. I've got dioxidine purple, and then I've got indigo. And again, we could blend them or we could just blend them with a damp brush and we get the same effect. But it means that you don't have to spray them because when you spray um, pastels or, uh, or anything that needs fixing, it goes darker. And that's why pure pastelists don't spray their work. They put them in a glass with a wide frame for the bits to fall off in the bottom and the glass doesn't touch um, and you can't bang them about too much because it darkens the color. So if they spend hours getting the, the right colors for anything, uh, they'll darken. I hope that makes, oops, I fell off my seat then. <laughs> Sense. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to think of light. So I'm going to think, okay, on the top of each one, and um, again, we're doing a bit more kind of thinking about, it's almost a dot. I'm oh, sorry, guys, you didn't see that, did you? So this one, um, we've got, but there is a little bit, as you come down, there's still a dot of highlight. And then the middle color would be all around. Now I could possibly do with a point on this. Uh, 
and luckily I do have a point for the very dark. And we're going to blend this. We'll try one first. So I do need the smallest, the smallest rigger, which oh, mine's ten zero. I'm going to use the ten zero purely because it's it's slightly smaller. It's not much in it actually. I might be okay with this one. It is a small rigger. This one, though, it's a it's a two zero, but it's a different. No, I'm going to go. Uh, I am going to go with my ten zero because it's not only that. It's activate the pink, and then we're going to pick up some other color around it. And we're going to do every one of those. It's going to take a while. <laughs> they're not so bad today, actually, Dara. Thank you for asking. Then they're, they're not too bad. The hands. Now, if I go over that now, I will lose. I will lose my highlight. So, you can go all the way around and leave your highlight to last. And remember, a highlight always looks better when it's next to a dark and a dark looks darker when it's next to a light so we kind of and then we spread that pink out but we have to get clean our brush every time if we want this highlight the other way to do it is don't put pink in it, don't put anything in it, just leave it. Dunk the brush every time. And you will get a small highlight on each one. Now, if it's in the wrong place, it'll look a bit silly. So you do have to sometimes think about this. And then the, the one at the back wouldn't have one. So we've got a little bit of a highlight on there um, and it's set. It doesn't need anything else, even though it's a pastel. I set it with water, which is a lot better for you to do that, if that, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I was quite surprised because I did a, a two-hour sketch um, in the Abbey. Um, I did a two-hour pencil sketch in the Abbey of um some lace um hanging on a st on a stone and so um i was quite surprised because normally when i do a pencil sketch um my hands hurt for a while so i was quite i was quite happy about that um i thought that'd be quite okay now again you've got to think about what you've done because if you forget what you're doing you get in a pickle so we'll go We'll go around with that. I think I may actually have to break a rule. Let's see. And sharpen a pencil. I don't often sharpen my pencils. And I never sharpen them. Yeah, I don't like that. Look, the spitting. I don't like Kurt that. I sharpen them with a, a scalpel blade, but. My hands are a bit bad at the minute, so I don't trust myself with a scalpel blade, but I've taken a little bit off. So, and again, if you play with one side, eventually you'll get a sharp corner. So, and then of course under there, you're not going to get very much. I 
I do like that pink actually, it just gives it a little bit of something. So we'll do that bit of pink. And then we'll go in with that kind of darker one under there. A little bit of dust. If you get too much dust, you are pressing down too much or using too much pencil. So I can very carefully go across. Just touching the pink. If I touch any other colour, I have to stop because I look I'll miss that little pink highlight. But again, it's another nice, soft way to work. And pastels are so wonderful. Oh, thank you, Jesse. Should you be doing that, Jess? There's not much in there. So I don't know if you've all seen met Jesse. This is Jesse very quickly. I'll show you Jesse Doodles. This is the little cat that we rescued. Jesse Doodles. Jesse. I don't know if you can see her or not. I can't see the screen. Oh no, she's not there. She she is. Hi, Jess. Jesse. Should you be in there? This is little Jesse. She was quite shy, but she's coming out of the shell now. You shouldn't be in there. There's nothing in there for you. So there's our little Jess. Jessie Doodles and the naughty boy on the floor. Snorting like a piglet. Hi, Jess. Is there low? She can get quite vocal, can Jessie? Oh, thank you, Dana. Thank you. If you've got any questions, pop them in caps because I'm a bit. I haven't got my glasses on. Are you coming to see me? No. Hello, darling. Hello. So, this is little Jessie Doodles, who doesn't often doesn't stay on your knee very well. Come on, Jessie. Hiya, Jess. Hello, Jessie. This is the little girl that they used to put the cigarettes out on. So she's still a bit skittish, but she's getting there. She's getting there. She's so pretty and so tiny. Hello, Jessie Doodles. Jessie Doodles. Hello, Jessie. You're not going up there. Hi, Jess. This is little Jessie Doodles. Hello, darling. Let me sit down. Let me sit on my knee. Don't look round because he's behind you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> trouble. Hi, Trouble. You're jealous, aren't you? Poor Alfie. He's jealous. I know, Alfie. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, she's doing really well, is Jessie, because they did want to uh, euthanize her because they said, oh, she's too skittish. And she's come out and she, ba she boxes off his ears now. So if he gets too close, she says, no, no, you're not doing that. So she's wonderful, is little Jessie. But she's so tiny. You cannot imagine anybody. I mean, it's bad enough being cruel to any animal, but I mean, you wouldn't, wouldn't, but you could put a cigarette out on, on Bungle and you wouldn't even feel it because he's got such long hair. She is short haired and has no hair whatsoever. She's a very short haired little girl. And. Uh, I just cannot, cannot imagine. And it was a female as well. It was a female. It was a man and a woman. 
I just hope I can't get hold of them because I'll be putting cigarettes out on them. But then that makes me as bad as they are. So I don't know about that. But you'd like to think you'd do that. Sorry, guys, don't get me on cruelty. <laughs> Although Samantha's friend at college, the, the girls used to put cigarettes out on her because she's disabled. And I just think that is just so bad. She's covered in cigarette burns. She's severely disabled and they used to get her in the toilets and put cigarettes out on her. And I just wanted to go and shoot them. <laughs> Sorry, I did. I really did want to say, right, you don't deserve to be on the planet. Sorry. If you can do that to anybody, but to do it to a disabled person. You don't deserve to be on the planet. I'm sorry. And I get very emotional when I think of that. I just, oh, wish I'd have seen them. I just think that is just so bad. Sorry, guys. I'm on a rant. <laughs> I'm on a rant. So I kind of like that one, and they're, 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 they're all different because in theory with the light they should be different, but obviously it's a lot to think about. But because of the way the colour's coming out as I'm scratching, they're going to be different. So it makes each berry different, even though you're doing it in the same way. So you don't have to think, oh, that highlight will be there. And that shadow will be there because I don't think you need to do that. Oops. And you can always pick a bit of colour up from somewhere else. I just really like this indigo for shadows. It's really wonderful. And it's very good for green leaves as well. It really is nice for leaves. And now we have the big girl running around. Hi, big girl. You can't be in here. It's too hot in here for you. You've got a coat. Oh, bless her. So our rescued Romanian little girl is doing well, or big girl. She's doing well and she's so clean, bless her. And then we have an elf pants. So we've got a bit of a zoo going on at the minute. We haven't got any kittens. Um, I think that's because we've got the new girl and, um, but she's, she's, it's taken her, I think a couple of months. She, she now knows what a cat is and she's behaving herself. So that's quite nice. So you can, you can faff and unfaff and color however you feel the shadows and the highlights are going as you go along. I hope that makes sense. So if you don't want a lot, you can blend them at the bottom because there wouldn't be much of a highlight on the bottom, if that makes any sense. And then if you want a bigger highlight on the top, you have to clean your brush every time. Because you you do pick up colour because, as I say, pastel is basically, it's almost, but not quite, pure pigment. As I say, it's not quite pure pigment, but it's almost pure pigment. So it's like dust. I think I want to put a bit more dark under that one. Again, you can go back in. Or you can leave it for a little while. Oh, thank 
talking about Betsy's in, in the other room, and she's just started to come through to the other room now. So hopefully I'll have one cat with one hand and one cat on the other side of the sofa. Um, again, if you were thought, thinking of a shadow, you might have a shadow over that one. Um, does that seem to be in focus? Is that okay? It's not an autofocus, is it? I don't think so. Um, and again, you've 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 got to think as well. Now, sometimes you can blend them with a blending tool and then just go over like that. But what you have to remember is. You do need a certain amount of ratio water to to pastel because they're very, very strong pigmented. So um, you can smudge them if you do that. But I kind of like that one. So I've got another one here. So again, this one might have more pink on because it's showing itself more to the... So they don't all look alike. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter if they all don't look alike, but it, it depends on, again on what you want to what you want to show. So, oh dear. The one thing you've got to think about with pastel is we're on a flat surface with no tooth and pastels and pastel pencils are built for paper with a tooth. So you've got to bear that in mind. So there's almost, when you're blending, you get kind of, when I did the Harry Potter one, the Hagrid page, um, you, you can do one over and one again and that's it. So when I did the Hagrid page, um, I used an eraser to take something off and then I blended a darker shadow to make the cottage stand out and the the wood set back. Um, and you've got to think about that because it's a pastel, it's a dust. Um, and the other thing I do is that you don't use too much because one is a waste. And if you've got asthma, you've got to be a little bit careful. So I do want to keep some of these highlights if I can and that one looks slightly lighter so when they get further down they'll be darker so I'll be using less pink and more of the the other color but again I don't when I'm paint when I'm kind of coloring in these kind of books I don't want to think reality. When I do the Harry Potter one, I do. This one, I've just got a basic thinking about it because it's a make-believe, so I don't have to think. I mean, I could do a purple purple deer. I could do white flowers. So I can do lots of different things. I don't have to think about it. It's just I thought that if you were doing a wildlife one, you could do that. So again, this one will have more pink on the top and then less behind and it is a, it's a scratch that's all it is it's a scratch that's all it is because any more and your dust will just fill the floor or if your paper's flat mine's actually falling down but this is not pastel paper so we do not have a tooth so we have to either wet it to make it stick to the page or we've got to blend it in so you do have a choice you can blend it but again that's that's a hard blender rubbing a page and my fingers don't do that for very long but this way I can go on for quite a while if I want so you've got to find what's best for you, what's comfortable. You've always got to be comfortable when you're doing this. If you're not comfortable, you will not be able to do it for long. And you'll get frustrated because if you start a page, you might want to finish it. So there's always, you've always things to think about. 
get comfortable, get organized, get all your bits and pieces. You don't be getting up every five minutes for things like I do sometimes. I must admit, I'm quite lucky. I hope he gets up and gets all my things for me. So, again, I've got. Again, we've got and um, we'll put a little bit behind there because there normally is a little bit behind there it's not always kind of Samantha's got Samantha's doing some training with her. So Alfie's in here so sulking. <laughs> so look at Alf. You can blow it if you want. I don't normally blow because I've got asthma. I normally leave things as they are. But you do pick colour up, so you've got to clean your brush if you want to keep your highlight. I'm just going to take that off because it's just a bit too light for that. Anyway, we're supposed to be getting a bit darker as we come down here now. And then we've picked up quite a lot of colours so that will go underneath. And maybe on that one there. So then we've got a little bit of pink. And then you've got... So, you know, if you've got an edge, you don't need a point. All you do when you sharpen your pencils is put it down the drain. It's a tight Yorkshire lass. It's, it's not my favourite. And then we've got darkish. And again, normally the artist put cross hatchings and hatchings or dots and more dots to, in, to show dark shadow. Again, it's it's a bit tedious, but you know we, we we're being a bit creative, and we steady working away. It's steadily growing. It's not a race. It's, you do it how you want to do it. In your, on your pace as well. You might have to get up every five minutes to go see if the baby's okay. Or when my grandchild arrives, it'll be uh, stop, go, stop, go, stop, go all the time, I'm sure. For those of you who don't know, I'm going to be a grandma in the end of July. When you picked up your colour, you can kind of take the others back if you want to. Has anybody got any questions? Can you see those? Okay. It's a little bit 
blurred. Can we read? Oh, I can read that, okay. There is a bit of sunshine just peeping through. There's always sunshine peeping through here. <laughs> Oh, hi, Alf. I didn't know you were down there, darling. So, again, they're set. So we've got five down here. Um, but I'll just work on these leaves up here because the, the camera seems to be at a slightly better an angle, I think. Oh, maybe I'll go down there then. That might be better. So put the pink... And it's, it, it's very rough. It's a little scratch of colour, that's all. And if you keep turning around, you can get an edge. So you can get a very small amount if you want. That might be... Again, normally under here, if it was a thick bramble, you wouldn't see these as light as the others. But because this is make-believe and pretend, we can get away with just... And just a bit of a stroke of colour. Normally isn't too bad. Oh, another word of warning though, if you are doing it like this, don't put your hands on it because it's dust. It's a pure pastel. And you can do this with the Inktense blocks. They're kind of a bit pastel -y. There's some Hannah Carlson videos I've done with her pages. I think it's the cat that's done in Inktense blocks. So you've got some really dark colours and then you go to these beautiful highlights because you started with a very dark colour. She's not seen a horse before, so she has a bit of a meltdown when she goes down the garden. Um, actually, restoring my studio that's down the garden to use in the summer. So there might be a few videos from there. And then go in with the darkest. So you can do that, or you can do each individual one. I say you have to remember about where your hand is because these will smudge. It's... Can you get down, please, Alfie? where the dots are showing shadow. If you blended this, it would look really nice. You can blend in the same way, little circles. But I much prefer to do it this way because one is you're not using a hard blending tool. Oops, I want to get, keep the highlight. And the other one, it's a lot easier on your hands 
not using a blending tool. I've got quite a few pages I've started and I just cannot bear to use the blending tool. And if you want to keep that pale pink highlight, you have to clean your brush. Because these are almost pure pigment. It's a pastel. But the binder for a pastel is so little compared to pigment. It's nearly all pure pigments, of course. Dark, a dark reflection in there, dark shadow in there. Push that to be dark in there. She's doing so well. She doesn't know English, so we she's in a bit of an alien thing. So. Bless her. Rocky, good girl. Did you enjoy that? Just let her up.
sorry guys we're just going through our training with Sam wanted to talk about her training so we she's let She's let Frankie off and she's come back, so she's just gonna go try it again. She's trying recall with it, but of course, because she's Romanian, she doesn't speak a lot of English, she doesn't know a lot of English, so it's not always easy with a foreign dog rescuing a foreign dog. So, all I'm doing is just scratching to the two colors. I decided I like the leaves, olivey color. I would prefer to do it when there's somebody else home so we can chase after her because I can't chase after anybody anymore. The light's playing up now. I know, Alfie, you can go out in a minute. Alfie wants to go out, but... We can't let Alfie off because he just runs away. He doesn't understand. I know. I know. I'm not sure if I like these. There's not much green in this olive colour. It's not. It's more brown than olive, but... Um, I can always do them again, let them dry and do them again and build build on top. I can do I can build on top in this way because I'm not blending into the paper. I'm actually wetting it and it's sticking. But when you're blending the other way. Oh, thank you, Pamela. Hi, hi Pamela. Anybody else I've missed? Hi, Kenny. Anybody else I've missed? Um, I do like using this method I have to say I do like this I think I might put a bit more green but I can actually put a bit of a green wash over I've got a bit of green in that one um, I can work quite dark so the, the page opposite I'm going to use my pastels and the pencils in a different way but I could use my pants pest the pastels are behind me in my beautiful vintage box that I got last year or even maybe the year before I'm going quite fast now you can take your time and make it nice and neat if I zoom out a bit let's see Oops, that was the wrong one. Let's see what happens. Oops, don't know what that was. I've lost my thing now. You see all the sun coming through the house, <laughs> through the roof. Um, so you can you can feel that it's there, but it's not coming off because I've I've I've, I've set it with that. So we've got a nice bow. So we're going to have a pink bow, and I did say the reds for that. And I'm going to put the paintbrushes down. Just help if you put the paintbrushes down. Do have a little bit of dust down there, not much, but just a tiny bit that you would expect. But I'm going to leave that olive green out and put some, and we might put some green on there. So although that was dark olive, light olive, pale olive, and um, dark olive, the the green olive is green. So they're not quite like that, but it will be fine. So um, we want some, we want a bow. So I think we're going to have to have a pinky purple bow. So we've got a magenta, a fuchsia, a burgundy. There's a soft violet. Um, Oh, 
there's a soft violet and a burgundy and dioxidine purple I think is going to be quite dark so I'll try those so I'll do the, the bow it's going to be about the light guys oh thank you Pamela thank you so um So these are Derwent watercolour pastels. So these are professional pastels. Uh, and again, this, they're very well pigmented. Um, I was looking at how to make pastels, but um, I'm still working on the watercolours. So we've got pale there, pale there. Pale and pale there, and then we've got Oh my goodness, I hope she comes back. So that's a number two brush. So start where it's the palest, and then we'll blend that down. And it's always e it's it's not as easy. Clean the brush and then This brush is probably a bit too wet, actually. It is a bit too wet, is that brush? Oh, it looks like she's she's remembered. It's, she's done well.
Hi guys. Oh no, I'm not using mineral splints. I've got asthma, guys. It's just water. It's my little pot of water. That you don't. If you use mineral splints or fixatives on pascals, it changes the colours. Um, and this is just a really gentle way to work, and it would go through as well. If mineral splints would go through, because you're basically making a marker. Mineral spirits are a marker. So it's just water and the derwent pastels, but they are professional watercolour pastels. You, uh, sorry, they're professional pastel pencils. Um, you can do with pastels. Um, I've got my beautiful tray of pastels behind, uh, which I'm going to do this one, and I'll do it darker. But the pan pastels are not the same. Um, I don't think they're professional pastels, so they work, they'll have a, they've got a different binder in them. Um, you've got to be a bit careful. Um, they're not they're not technically the same. Uh, these are pastels. Um, So I think I'm going to use that mushroom colour that I said. Um, I think it was the raspberry, uh, the raspberry I used for that. So I think it was the cadmium, the cadmium red. So we've got, we've got cadmium red there. And then um, I'll have to use maroon because there, there's a burgundy and there's a maroon. Maroon is kind of a burnt umber. Oh, sorry, it's not a burnt umber. Burnt carmine. Sorry, guys, my brain's not connection. And then we want... Um, I'm going to use saffron, I think. I think I'm going to use that saffron colour on top. I suppose I could have used a pink, but I'm going to use the saffron and then blend that first. Pick up the, the cadmium red. I'm going to come down first because if I go up first, I'll lose that highlight. So I'm going to take all that to there. Clean the brush and then go back and blend down. Or oh, I can blend up a little bit so I don't lose the highlight. Same with this one, it's going down a bit. A lot of artists used to, if they were doing an oil painting, if I take that up, I've lost a fair bit of that highlight. So you can get some scriber pa pastels for not very much money and they'll do the same. You just scratch the corner. And as they get down here, they're going to get darker. When they're smaller, they're darker. And that's a little one as well down there. So all that dust has been made into a watercolour. It's not technically a watercolour, but it reacts like a watercolour. And it's all flat. So if you want to do big spaces, you can do that. Anybody questions? Oh, hi, Tina. Anybody else popping in? 
So I've got her to do. So she's a big space. I'll have to break it up because we will get a bit of buckle. And then we've got the little house there. So I've got the browns. So I want the... Oh, the I have to put the fan on a minute because bungles melting. Um, so I've got um, a seal and now Venetian red is probably good for the the deer. Venetian red. Um, oh, I have got a burnt carmine. I'll just that's dry now. Put a little bit of burnt carmine on it. Yeah, I prefer that. I use burnt carmine on a red or a pink. A shadow. It just, it just seems to just work that bit darker. Create a nice shadow color. So I need sepia and I've got a seal. Now I think seal is actually almost a black, so I don't think I want that one. I need um, a burnt umber and a sepia. Sepia is very dark. So I use sepia for this shadow on wood. There's um, a yellow ochre and a raw umber. There is a brown earth, but I don't think I'm going to use So again, the shadowy bits here. It's just a dot, and then we've got raw umber. Alfie, be quiet. And then we've got um, sepia, which is very dark, and the sepia is going to do all the shadows. Blend that. Put a little bit of a highlight on there. And remember, if you put all the color on and you've not set it with watercolor with water you it will smudge but I set all mine now just gives it a little bit of interest I'll show you the book in a second Adela. I've just um, got it pinned. <laughs> I've got it pinned. I might not get it back. Um, I just can't remember which one it is. No, 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 no barking. No barking, please. Thank you. No barking, please. No barking, Alfie. Thank you, Alfie. Shh. Alfie. Shut up, Alfie, please. Shh. 
healthy. I wonder if she's got out. Just bear with me a second. That's number ones. Be back in a second, guys. Again, I want a little bit of my um, uh, light on the top. And this will also make it round as well. Now, so we can manipulate the color. Shh, Alfie, no, you're not doing bark, Stanley. Good boy. It's quite well behaved, it's, it's passed up when you add water to it. It's not going to do anything too crazy. But you, 
you're restricted because it's not watercolour paper and it's no tooth in it. So you can only get a bare minimum to scratch the surface in one layer. Um, I think I'm going to do this this colour and then manipulate that down to it's very pale. How do you stop it? Sorry, guys, he just can't help himself. I've got a nice highlight on that one there. But I think we could put a little bit of on there. Look. And I need a, a pale green now. So we've got See, I do like the fact that I actually managed to put my pencils back together as I'm going. <laughs> um, so I need a green now. So there's shamrock. Oh, there's a forest green. I don't think I used forest green, did I? So, oh, I used forest green for that. So I was going to use... Um, side, I think. And again, just a... If you get it in the right place, you don't have to blend all of it. Makes any sense. So again, it's taken a couple of hours to do a page, so it's not too bad. Didn't finish the other one, so take so I need to, the smallest brush this time because it's definitely the smallest colors and these are quite quite pale colors these are not the leaves are in your face I don't know if I want to make them darker or not The birds are having a good tweet because we're having a very sunny day today in the UK. A nice sunny day. And you want just a, 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 the basic amount of, if you have a lot of pastel, you need just a little bit more water. You've got to be able to set them. They have to be set. Um, but once you've touched them all with color, once you've touched them all with water, they'll be set. I want a nice highlight on that one. going to use deep cadmium so we've got some light coming out of the little 
I think I'm going to do these gold. And we've got the butterfly to do. And as long as you kind of get them all blended in, they'll be fixed. So you don't need any fixatives. You just say, so technically they are not a watercolour, but they are react like a watercolour. And you can do that with any pastel. If it's a professional pastel, any true pastel will turn to a watercolour if you blend it with water. So you can make washes and things as well. And they're very, very strong because they are pure pigment. Well, almost as damn it, pure pigment. There's a lot more pigment in them than there is in a watercolour because the binder is less. There's less binder in a pastel than there is in a watercolour. And there's less binder in a watercolour than there is in an acrylic. Um, that could be gold as well, actually, couldn't it? The, the key could be gold. No, normally I would do that individually, but magenta and a green, a pea green. And then as soon as you see it darken very slightly, it'll darken when it's wet and then it'll it'll lighten when it dries. And so although it isn't technically a watercolour, it's reacted like a watercolour. And it will move again if you want it to. You can move it again like you can a watercolour. But it's the, it's the easiest way to blend. I cannot blend pencils, but I can blend these now. Um, if something was very strong, just put a bit of colour onto there. I found a ladybug, so she will be cadmium red. A ladybug. And we have a butterfly at the top, soft violet. Oh, I've got the pink. I'm going to do that different colour than violet ox. I'm going to have a blue butterfly. We shall have a cornflower, cornflower blue butterfly. Powder blue wings. And the French ultramarine middle. And then just start with the palest first. Oops, sorry, guys. Not on the butterfly. And there are a few specks of dust I'll show you in a second. I have another butterfly there. Another blue butterfly. Powder blue. And ultramarine. And it really is just a scratch. I 
And because you're using a, a, just a drop of water, you can get some very strong colours if you want to. Um, I kind of like, I might leave her light. I might leave her white. I don't know. I just have to have a think. So if I just put the camera down to there, there you can see a little bit of dust, just some specks of dust. And that's what's fallen off. So there's not very much at all. Um, there's not very much at all. And the page is all set, even though it's pure pastel. Um, and if I can just try and get this. It's Tenderful Enchantment is the book. And they're the colours. So I think I might do something with the leaves, although I do like them behind the toadstools because uh, they're not a green green. I'm oh, sorry, guys. Um, but I like I like blending with the especially blackberries. There's um, Hannah Carlson book. I did quite a lot of pastel work in there, but I can't blend with. Um, I don't seem to be able to blend. I'll just see if I can get out a bit. Um, I can't seem to blend with a blending tool, um, but I can blend with a, a rigger. Um, but I must admit, even scratching the pencil in, it's, it's hurt my hands a bit. My wrist is hurting now. Um, so it's it's stronger than we're doing the watercolours, then we're doing very strong colours, aren't we, I think. Um, and very pale colours. So you can get some quite nice effects. I mean, I could do have done them a lot stronger than that. And that's the beauty of pastel, because we, we're very limited when it's just an ordinary piece of paper, what we can do. Um, but the nicest thing is it doesn't go through at all. Whereas um, if you wanted some darker colours, you might think it'll go through. It won't go through, uh, but markers obviously will do. Um, this is one that I was using blended with a blending tool and you get a beautiful soft effect. Um, and I was colour matching with that. There is, I think there is a video on that one, but it's using the blending tool. So you've got stronger colours and paler. But um, it's again using a blending tool, which is quite stiff. So it's almost like a pencil. So it's hard hitting hard, um, hitting a hard surface. And that makes your wrist hurt. Um, whereas when you're using a rigger, it's, it's easier. So the other thing I was going to do today is I'd like to work in this, but I'm not sure about the colours. I like to get the colours to colour match. Most of them I don't want to do that, but there are certain books that I do. Um, so I was going to do another quick one. I think I'll do this one, and I'll do it with um, ink tense blocks. I'm going to pop it there so it looks better with the angle of the... Actually, it would, it would go better there than the angle of the camera that's the only thing about this desk is I haven't got it flat yet so if I run that down a bit it'd be more of a oops More of a kind of straight angle that would be better. So I'll just wind that down. I've got a new tripod, guys, and it's it's not behaving as itself really. And I'll zoom in a bit. So you don't see the dog at the back or the front. <laughs> they move round where the um, 
where the sun is. So if I do, if I do that and turn that. Down. Is that okay? Slippers, can't we? I just think I can move this chair to get the camera across a bit better. So we've got some really pretty shoes there. So the other thing I wanted to use today is if you didn't have... Oh, I didn't. I've got my ink tense blocks. Now, again, if I was more organised, I could actually put them like that and use them because they won't fall off. Oh, actually, they won't fall off. I could put them like that. I think... I didn't. I did. You can't imagine what I just did. I tipped them upside down and they've all fallen out. Why would I tipped up wouldn't fall out, guys? Anybody got any ideas? They're all over the floor. Can you believe that? You have to be just there, our pants, just in the way. Right. Of course, it's some broken now. So this is not how to get your pastels out. And that is going to be so bad getting them back into oh, order now. I believe I did that, guys. Just having a senior moment. Now, the ink tense blocks have got a number on. And it's quite tempting to use that as a little well, but you won't know the colour. So if you use the England little dip here, you could make a little well. I don't know if one's gone to a little well or not. And keep the number. Because the reason you want to keep the number is, if you have the Derwent ink tense pencils, they're all the same number. So the ink tense pencils coincide with the ink tense blocks. So I've got here um, a 540. Now I wouldn't know what that does. It's just a, a green. But if I look up 540 on here, 540 is olive. So I know that this particular stick of color is going to do that and so that's again why i use the little book if you haven't got um the ink tens pencils and you have the ink tens blocks make yourself a little color a color guide scratch a little bit of color and then use a brush and move it across so you've got dark to light and that will give you a color range for every block I hope that made sense, guys. Did that make sense? Oh, happy birthday, Melody. I hope you had a wonderful time. Um, and they, they normally go into colour orders, but I've kind of made a bit of a boo-boo, so I'm just going to have to bob them in because they're protected in this little, this little, um, I normally get them out, this little foam thing. I normally get the foam out, but leave them in the trays 
Um, but obviously I dropped the tray this time. So there's 710, 720, 740, 1910, uh, 10, 2120. So they do go up in order. So that's quite nice because you, you'll have them in the same colour range. Um, if you can see the ones up there, you'll have them in the same colour range. I don't know why I tipped it up and didn't think they would fall out because <laughs> um, they would. So like 10 is obviously um, a, a, a bluey, a more bluey colour. Um, I'll just put them in and then just have to kind of play about a bit. That's 40 and 20 and 30. And again, if they're in order, it's I'm not being kind of phonetic. It's just that, you know, you go light to dark and dark to light when you're going up and down them. So that's the only reason that I would put them in. Um, and I do try to keep... I do try to keep a number of I've got them all in here. I've lost them. So the ink tank blocks give you... Oh, I've broken another one now. Sack the juggler. Yeah, I've lost one and a half somewhere. There's another one going. Another one missing somewhere. Um, but again, as you can see, if I don't tip it up, again, they're in order, colour order. They're in numerical order, um, and that makes it easier. Um, and you'll see I've used the England as the well, so the England's disappeared, but I've kept the number. Um, so if you play on this end and leave that end with the, you, you can keep the number. I hope that makes sense, guys. And I'm just a bit scared that this one on the floor. Just bear me a second, because I don't want to crush it. And it's completely disappeared. It'll obviously be the, the colour of the carpet. I don't know how far a pastel can roll when it's not round. I don't have my glasses on, so it's probably why well, I can't see it. Never mind. Lost it. Never mind. Lost it. Oh gosh, I've lost it. See, I've lost the camera now as well. Oh yeah. They're quite crumbly. I've got all sorts of the wrong. Right, I've got it. Oh, it's probably one that I'll need as well. Got any gumdrops. Right. Put that in there. So they're all back in place, even though they're not in the right order. I just have to have a drink of water, guys. Just bear with me a second. Oh. Right. Gosh. So I'm not going to put them up there, guys, because they're going to end up on the floor. <laughs> on the floor. So again, you can do two things with these. I just think I can get. I can't get nearer the. I just can't get nearer this. Take the the, the pastel out and scratch, or you can use it with. Um, I think I might use a watercolor paper. Oh, excuse me, because my hand is starting to hurt. And I have. Um, so many brush, uh, water brushes that I bought over the years, and I still I bought this one, and it's too wet. I bought the sea white one, uh, but it's too wet. I bought the neat the Caran d'Ache one that's too wet. So I like the Derwent number one. If you're using it in a colour book, if you're using one in a if you're using it, oh gosh, I still haven't organised all my pencils. If you're using it in a watercolour book on watercolour paper, then 
You can use any water brush you want, but if you're using it on what I call ordinary paper, the Derwent number one brush is brilliant for just, if you just activate the, you don't get too much water. I found one. So the number one is quite nice because if you just activate the tip, it's just barely damp, and that's what we want. So we can do two ways. We can touch and make a little well in the England, get it quite strong, and then use it. Um, I might do that actually because then you can see that they they can be quite strong. Um, rather than just touching the colours. Because we can get this effect if we touch a little bit of colour and then manipulate it. But we don't want to do that. We want some quite nice bright colours on here. So we could have some... She's got some lanterns. Now, I'm not very good. And again, backgrounds with watercolour crinkles a little bit. So all these will be giving out some light. Um, and I'm not very good at doing that. So. They will be yellow, but I won't be putting highlights on anything. See, now I've said that, I can see a highlight from that light on there. Um, we have the same beautiful, beautiful colours that we have with the pencils. So some very bright, vibrant pinks and oranges and yellows. Um, and also the, the gorgeous teals and blues and purples. So we've got some gorgeous bright colours that will really stand out. If you wanted to do a practice, um, again, if it's a new technique, I might just do a practice at the back. You could do a practice. Uh, excuse me, Alfie. Alfie Cross. Alfie, she'll box your ears. Good girl, Jessie. Alfie hasn't learnt. Now, this may be a better one because it's got smaller spaces. And again, that's something to think about. When you're thinking about colouring a page, think about what you want to work with. So if you want to be working a bit wetter or if you want to something that's very dry, if you're outside, inside, at the beach, think about what you're going to use. Normally, I do, it determines what size things are. So these, I wouldn't get a watercolour effect with these size things but I would with bigger things. So this probably would be a rigger, um, like this one. You know, um, to get this watercolour effect, I needed the rigger. If you don't want the rigger, you just want to do something quite loose, like this one. This is my touch and go. That's brilliant. You can use any kind of good quality water-based product, whether it's an ear colour two, whether it's a Derwent art bar, whether it's Inktense Pencil, Derwent Pastel Pencil, uh, Derwent um, Inktense Block, you want the colour on the tip and then you're manipulating it with a damp brush, touch and go very fast. This is going to be touch and go, but I might actually, so that's touch and go with those. And again, that's another touch and go with a watercolour. Um, so they were quite a bit stronger. That's the pale one. And again, you what you want to do do you some some pages think oh yes pastel soft others kind of go no I want some bright blackberries or some say I actually want a highlight on here so there's different things that you can do um so we've got one lantern there and one lantern there so there's going to be light coming down on on the shoe but not necessarily on this bit Whereas normally you would have a highlight on this bit. So you can think about that. And I think because this is a bit like what I wanted to do is um, take everyday items and reduce them. So they are reality. Um, it's like surrealism. It's something real, but it's in a, the wrong place or it's connected to something else. And that's what this is. So then you do start to think about highlights like the crystals you know, and, and and water reflections and things. So different pages make you react differently. And you sometimes have to think, well, I actually want to work with this today, but 
but I don't want to do that page. So that's why you sometimes change. And that's sometimes why I open a book and I go, yeah, I want to work in here, but I don't want to work with that medium and it won't work because I want that to write. I mean, I, I think that would be ink tense. The ink tense purples I use for the Kerber Rosans. Um, I think that would be lovely for that, the teals and the colours. And I might not get that with my pencils. Um, the reds I have, I have some lovely reds. I might not get that with this particular way of working. Um, and I like the idea that I can have one book and I can work in different ways. I don't know if everybody else is the same. So thanks for stopping by, guys. So, yeah, I'm quite tempted to, I could act on this side. I could practice on this side if I want some very strong colours and see what happens. So very quickly, because again, it's a practice. I've not done it for a while. And you either do it, oh, I turned it wrong way. You either do it as a practice. Why won't you come out? Or you do it on a photocopy page. And seeing as I've got this, It won't turn. You won't turn, will you? No, because you're going to be awkward, aren't you? So I can show you very quickly. I'll get the, each bar out so you can see how much I'm using. Um, so this is obviously red. So we've got, and again, I could look at the different reds on here. So we've got hot red, cherry, carmine, uh, crimson, shiraz, um, and then the orange red is there's a scarlet and a poppy. I think poppy probably. So poppy is four hundred. So even though it's not named, I know that's poppy. So I can pick this stick up, and I know it's going to do roughly that so again I want to keep the number if I can get my little brush going it's not going to be very wet but it will be a little bit wet so that's very strong is that Let's see if I can manipulate that round And keep going back, just not too much though, but just go back for some more colour. In fact, I think I'm going to do a bit more colour actually. If you wet it too much and rub, this isn't watercolour, it won't like it. But if I go over it quick with a strong colour, it should be fine. because I've been rubbing, it's got a bit wet now, so this is going to be a bit crinkly, this. So, I've got a pinky red here. Now, that's too wet for me, is this brush. I don't like it getting too wet. If you activate the whole brush, it goes wet. If you just activate the tip, whoops, my, it's never done that before. It's actually dripped. So I'm not getting a watercolour effect, really. I don't know what's happened to this brush, but it's, it's far too wet. Normally, when you just activate the tip, you don't get a lot of water. Right, so I need a green. Green. Oh, 
and like a watercolor if you touch if you touch a piece of wet I'm not getting what I want really here it's it's, it's two this is this is my touch and go system and I don't want to do that with these because I can do that with the others I don't really want this touch and go I want more of a that's naughty Alfie Alfie Yeah, it's it's not doing what I want it to do, so I'm glad I had a practice. Sorry guys, the next door's dogs again. So I don't want to do that, so I'm gonna just stop the water brush, although it's easy, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to go back to a rigger and I have to turn my little pot over. Oops. Oh, I've just tipped it up now. I'll squeeze the cloth out. Start again. The advantage of this is it's not very messy. Again, you've got a tablespoon of water, so it's not very messy if you don't spill your water, that is. Right. It's good to have got my painting dress on, isn't it? <laughs> like my hands on the painting dress. Right. So we'll try a different way. Um, I'll touch the green. Mm, and then we'll try it an even different way then. We'll... I've struck some colour in. And then we use the rigger. I wanted it to flow a bit easier than that though, because it's a bit difficult. It's not difficult, but it's it's not the easiest way to work. Hmm. I'm not happy with that either. So, go back to brushes. I'll go back to the brushes and see if I can find. Do what I want it to do though. Um, it won't do what I want it to do if I don't use if I don't use a rigger. Let's just have a look at this. This one. I see this one will do the trick. I'm picking up that one. Let's see if I can do that with this one. Yes, that's quite nice. That that's giving me a bit more control. That's better. Sometimes you've got to play about a bit and just I've forgotten why I've got these big unruly riggers, but they work for bigger spaces. Yes, I like that. So I'm going to go with these. Now, these are quite big. These are De La Rone Aquafine, and that's a number six. So I've got a number six, and I've got 
four and a two. Now I will have to use a number one, I think that one is. So if I dunk them in the water and twist them. So because this is a bigger space and I want some nice highlights, I've gone for a bigger brush. I've got a six, a four and a two. And then that one's nearly the same size as that one. So let's have a look. I think it's probably going to have to be my 10 zero. Yeah, it could have to be the 10 zero because that's, that's one of my favorite ones. So I've got the 10 zero for the really fine little tiny ones that I want to do. Um, and again, you've got to look at big spaces. Actually, I didn't realize that that was a kind of a mushroom. So again, that's going to have to be done in sections if I didn't want to crease the page. If you're not particularly bothered about creasing your page, you're all right. But if you don't want to crease your page, it's a good idea to do that. Um, right. I don't know what's wrong with my number one brush because it's too, too runny. I don't want to do that today. So we're going to have to think of some shoe colours. So we've got some flowers. And normally I don't even think about things like that. It's just this is how it's making me want to work. I say I don't know how anybody else um, works, but I find that sometimes I have to have a bit of a think because you want to do pink shoes, a pink girl and pink flowers, and then you think, oh, it's a bit pink which it's it's okay, but it depends on the end of the thing you want to do. So sometimes I have a bit of a think. So they could be a gorgeous yellow rose and the shoes could be green. We've got some leaves. So the shoes could be purples and pinks or pinks with purple on. And then, um, right. Frankie, are you playing football? Oh, yeah. oh, hi, Danny. How did it go? All right. I suppose the other thing you could do because I've got the plate is to mix a little bit of color on a plate and then use it but again I, I, it's it's a bit too much messy for me I don't want to do that I want to kind of just just kind of go with it so um I think I've decided on dark shoes with a pale pale flower on them and a pale green leaf and that will be a highlight so and look at my my purples. I think I've only got one really purple in the ink tense. Uh, mauve. There's a mauve. And I used to like lagoon. Oh, there's a there's a deep violet. Yeah, I think I like deep violet. And then I think I'll do a a complementary colour flowers. Lagoon's quite nice, but I think I like Deep Violet 760. So I'll have a look for 760. And that's 760. So what we can do is touch, dunk the brush, twist it to a point, and then just pick up a little bit of colour. And really, I should be going down this way, but what I'm going to do is this. I'll go down here. I've just got a very tiny highlight on that. It'll take me a while to get used to this. I should have probably done a leaf first, but there we go. So you want three strokes this time. Again, just like the chameleon pens, you just keep going till it goes to nothing. And you get a lovely highlight. I'm 
Maybe I should have used a smaller brush for this. And it would always help if you could possibly turn the page. Um, let's really put the brushes down. Right, so I really do need a highlight going the other way, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have to put the highlight this way. Um, Remember, it's a highlight. Thank you. Thank you, darling. They're coming across almost like a suede shoe. I don't know if that's... One thing you've got to be careful with with these is you will get a line because it's an ink base if it was watercolor it would all disappear but it isn't watercolor it's an ink base so if i don't turn the page I won't get the effect. So I have to turn the page. So dunk and twist. Because it's almost impossible to get up there. Don't normally like working this wet. Again, you've got to be a bit careful you don't do too much wet and too much rubbing because you won't get that effect. And now I've lost my highlight because the highlight's on this side, not where the lantern is. I'm going to put the frill, that colour, but I'm going to use a tiny brush. I hope he's brought me a cup of tea, bless him. No, I'm not going to use that one because I dropped it. So again, what I have to do is damp brush, pick up the colour. And then do that with it. I just find it difficult to hold that. Get a bit of a highlight. I hope that's showing. Oh, Melody. Oh, no, just got he's gone. Oh, thank you. That's him when he comes back. He's, he's just had to go, unfortunately. 
today. So I've lost my tea, boy. You've got to remember to die. To <laughs> okay. Oh, Alfie. Alfie never fails, does he? Bless him. He never fails to spoil the day. I think we'll have that just that little bit darker. And then that one a bit lighter. See, we have a bit of a something going on. It's not always easy to get it exact. And of course, you can think that this is the inside, so it can be darker because it's inside. Don't know why you have to sit next to me and bark, Alfie. You can go somewhere else and bark. I think if we make that a bit darker, that looks like it's on the, on the inside. Again, you've got to remember we're on paper, we're not on watercolour paper. We're on paper. I probably would have, if I wanted to do this properly, I would have photocopied it and had a practice because it's. I wanted to work in a way that I'd not really worked before because of that lantern and because of the light, whereas normally I just think of natural light. So we don't have a glow, we just have a highlight. But when you have a candle or a light, you've got a glow and uh, I won't have that. So I've got a little bit of something going on with them, but not, not what I would like. But again, there are some pages that inspire you to just do that bit more too. So inside is going to be darker. So you want five strokes to pick up the full colour. They're very nice when they're very strong though. So again, I like the fact you can get that really dark, deep colour, but then we can get the palest pale colour. So you probably find you get 20 tones and shades out of each one so you know you're gonna really get your money's worth because you can work so so pale and delicate and yet you can work so light with just a bit of a hint so it's it's never going to be perfect because it's a practice and that one is on the inside that wants to be strong sorry guys the dog's just just bark 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 day today So we've got a little bit of a difference. And then I need the bigger brush to do the outside of that one. Put your lanterns. <laughs> Suppose you never thought about that when she bought them. Right. So I want um, a couple of strokes. Um. 
to get that colour going up there. I love that really pale colour from that orange colour. By doing that, I've lost my highlight, but never mind. I've got a better blend. They're not easy to blend these because they're, they're very, very strong and it's an ink base. So they're never going to be that easy to. I suppose we just. Now, I suppose what I could do is take that tiny brush. And have a watercolor effect coming down. And that is literally just stroking the tip across there to get a lovely highlight. Um, so I'm dunking the brush, twisting back on a baby wipe one stroke. And that will take it to nothing. Dunk, twist to a baby wipe, one stroke. And twist it. So we've got a bit of a highlight on there. Oh, we've got beautiful weather. Oh, well, we've got a few clouds come over, but it's still very, very warm. Thank you, Darla. Thank you. Nigel hasn't come back in yet, but I'll say hi. Oh, we need to do the, um, so I'm going to try with 70. And I might just get away with it. And we want that one there. Make a purple label. Gonna be a little bit careful going over it too much. Oh, I found a ladybird. So um, I'm gonna leave the lantern alone and the inside of the shoes. Um, I'm temp I was tempted to put pink on there, but I think I'll leave that. But I am gonna do the green. But again, I want to have a quick look at the greens to make sure that I don't. 
I don't pick a green that I know I'm not happy with. Um, again, I like the hooker's green. Um, this is a nice darker green here. That might look quite nice. Felt green is nice. So that's five uh, one five three zero. I'm just going to have a mouth of tea, guys. Oh, Bobby's just brought me a pot of tea. So I wanted five zero, did I? Is that what that one is? One five three zero, that's that one. I'm just going to put a little bit. It's very warm in here, in this room. It's a conservatory, so it's really warm. So the paint is drying out quite fast today. But there's no reason why I can't touch that one and that one and get the pale green that I want without going back to the... So again, I've got a little bit of variation on there. And I need a little bit of variation on that one as well. So we've got a little girl, and I've got this fine brush. I think I'm going to do her highlights in her hair. So when we look at the browns, I'll get the browns out and look at those. There's a leaf fern. Oh, mustard colour. That is quite nice for a blonde strawberry blonde. So mustard, I think, is seventeen ten. I think that's seventeen. No, that's not seventeen ten. Or seventeen ten. Of course, these, this is the ones that I've mixed up and I've dropped. And that's sixteen hundred. So I don't know what that one is. That could be mustard. I think I like that one. I'm going to try this one and see what it looks like. So pick a place underneath. So if it's not right, I can get rid of it. So if I do this one under here, I've got a natural highlight. So we want to go dark to light, and then we want to go light to dark back. And it just gives a bit of a variation. And I'm picking up just a pinprick. Again, I'm not stroking too much because I want a highlight. And if I picked up too much, even with this 10-0 brush, the rigor wouldn't be wet enough for a highlight. So there is a tiny highlight here. I actually quite like this. And um, this is how I used them before. But I did scratch them when I did that Hannah Carlson one. I scratched the colour on when I did the cat. Uh, there's the cat one walking through a path. This way, your pails are very pale. Um, so you get more um, you get more of a highlight. Because you're you're touching and you're in control of what you're doing. So I kind of like that. So again, do all that the highlight will come 
that way. Maybe I wanted to highlight the other way. I wanted to highlight that way. Again, it's a nice, delicate way to work. Once you get going, so if you did a, did a photocopy or a page you don't particularly like, that's another thing to do. So you've got the actual paper. A photocopy paper is quite quite thin, but if you can do it on there as a practice, that means you can actually do it anywhere. So it's a real good practice to do it on. Photocopy paper. And if you go to a shop, ask them to photocopy half a dozen of your favourite pages. So she's got just a little bit of highlight on there. There's only one that I'm not sure of there, but that's her sleeve. So I don't. Know. I think that must be her. The only thing wrong with this method is you have to dunk everyone to get the highlight. I hope that shows up. And they look like petals. They've got to be the same colours. Now she's got a tassel. Do we want the tassel the same colour as the shoe or not? Um, she could have a blue tassel. I don't drink my tea. My hobby goes bad that I don't drink his tea. <laughs> I don't drink my tea. So we'll have a quick look at the blues. Um, there's, that, there's the very pale blue. Um, now we do have some teal colours so that a nice teal colour for her dress I think so when we look at the blues we've got that iris blue which is quite nice I think that will make a nice tassel but I need the big brush I go back to my number six rigger the big one which is extremely long but you've got all that dampness and I'm only putting about actually I could I could do it with the smaller brush because you can do it in sections yeah because it's a small brush if you do it with a too big a brush you won't get the highlight because the tip's too big, if that makes any sense. So if we do it again, so that's quite strong. And of course, that's where the highlight is there. And it was just a pinprick just a pinprick to get that highlight where her hands are so really you want to do this section first then this section and do i'm going to do it into small sections then i may be able to save those little white dots Hello, Missy. How are you? Did you enjoy your walk? Were you good? You went for a run down the field. Calm yourself. It's not... She has a full fur coat on, bless her, and it's very warm in this room, but she can go in every, every room. 
she isn't the brightest bobbin in the pack. For an Alsatian, she is not the brightest girl. Are you, Missy? Do you want me to take that off for you? Frankie? <clears throat> Samantha? Some must have gone upstairs. I'm going to turn that round, guys, because what you want is you need that wrist action, especially when you like the... the um, so touch the blue I'll do that one first and then you've got full control of that there and I'm going to work backwards, so I'll, I should get a highlight in the middle, a little bit like we did with the. Um... I forgot what we call them. Oh, what did we call them? Um... The sea urchins with tentacles. I can't remember what they call them now. Gosh, jellyfish. When we had the jellyfish the other day. And if we turn that round, sorry guys, I don't know if you're sick, but if we turn that round and work that way, we should have a highlight just about there. Um, but you've got to work small now. So strong colour. And then take it up to nothing. So we dunk again, twist. I haven't got a lot of room there, so I'm struggling a little bit with that. So we'll take that up. And the beautiful thing is, because it's actually what it is, it doesn't matter that some highlight is slightly different because it would be like that because it's a tassel. So you can just get away with it if you do that. So we move that up to there and then it's gone. Oh yes, Darla, I've got I've got a very expensive one. <laughs> I'll show you the cover my conservatory and then I'm going to be kind of dark under there so that we know that that's actually in shadow so I've got a bit of a highlight on there um but this is where I'm working here because I keep knocking that so da, da, da. Look at my fan Dabiosi box. <laughs> it's a cardboard box held on with two pieces of, of planks. <laughs> and that's my that's my shade because it would be really expensive um, to get blinds for here. Um, and um, now Hubby's retired. <laughs> but it means that uh, if you can see just the top, and just about when that's at the bottom, and just about in the shade. So that's the sun, um, but it is warm in here. Um, but of course, where are the dogs? They're not in the cold. they're not in the cold room. No, they're not. They're here, both of them. <laughs> they're both here next to me, melting. <laughs> So, because uh, I said it can't be a conservatory because it's self facing, you know, it gets the sun all day, it'll melt minus 30 in winter. So, it said I wanted it for all year round. So, um, don't go to coral windows because they're pants. They take the money off you and pants. Pants, they're not good, they're pants. <laughs> so, there we go. So, I quite like that. It's very, very pale to very dark. So, you've got 
it's not brilliant and it's it's a bit patchy but it actually look makes them look a little bit like velvet they're not they're, they're not kind of shiny if that makes any sense any sense um, i do have and bungles in here as well and of course bungles long head alfie's on the floor by my feet even though you can go in the cool lounge um, so th my dogs are not the most intelligent. I have, <laughs> I have to say they're not the most intelligent creatures in the land. And I haven't done anything with, with the room um, because my desk is in the way. As you say, there's this big chair at this side. So um, I'm always in trouble. Um, but I've had to put my foot down and say, no, no, I want to be in this room. I need to be in this room um, because I have art things all over the lounge and it's a mess. Uh, so, um, and I've got one chair piled up and cushions and pillows and pills and all sorts. So I need to get into a corner. But what I have done is hubby's been, I have like a garden room halfway down um, and it holds the big, I mean, I've got some big paintings here. I'll take the camera off really quickly. Oops, sorry, guys. So that's a big painting. And I have another big, there's a big painting. And then I've got another board. Then I've got another one down here to paint. Um, so I brought these in here to paint. But I think I'm going to take that easel. And I've got another one of these boards. But it's not, hasn't got the electric light on. But it is one of these boards that opens up. It's a draftsman's board. Um, this is the one that's got the hydraulics. And it's really, really heavy. It has all the the gobbins in it and it's absolute it weighs a ton um so the big paintings i think i'm going to take downstairs that's the big one with the books on it um but I, I will be doing oil paints up here but not the big ones so i'm going to try and paint in there but that, that will have to be a video because the internet doesn't go in the caravan and it doesn't go it doesn't go in the caravan and it doesn't go halfway down the garden but i can run an electric cable down there so um there'll probably be videos rather than um than the live show if that makes any sense yeah. so i have bricks and cats so i've got to rethink how i can put this west it's very very cold the sun doesn't touch the front corner at all that's why it's always damp in there but it's very very cold. Um, but it's 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 a typical old cottage, you know the the walls. So the heat rooms at the back, and you've got your warm rooms at the front. Oh, sorry guys, I'm on a waffle now because my headaches come back, and I'm on a waffle. I do apologise. I did think of some little pink fuchsias here, and there is a colour called fuchsia pink. So I think they have to be fuchsia pink. Um. I hope that's so. Can you can we see that? Okay, they're not brilliant, but there is a bit of a watercolor effect. Um, but I need the more press. It's 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 not easy when you've got a small space like this. It's brilliant. It's like just like the chameleon pens, but works backwards. Strong color, keep going, and it goes to nothing. Strong color, keep going, keeping between those two lines, just exactly like chameleon pens. But you've got to get the right size rigger. You've got to get the right dampness and you've got to get the right amount of colour on it. Um, and without doing a practice page, that's really difficult. And of course, we've got circles here. So even if you did the chameleon pens, um, I've just found a brilliant book. I was I lost my, my colour books and I found them. And my room is an absolute pigsty because it is the cat room. Um, but I found my, if I just very carefully see if I can do this. Um, so I have all the gardening books and craft books and books there. Then behind me, I have all my art books here. And behind me, I have that beautiful, which I was going to use today, but I'll try and do it next week. I can't turn around. Can I turn around? Can I turn around? I might be able to turn around. Oops, I hope I can actually turn around. There we go. So I've got some drawers here, but I still think that it's it's going to be too warm to put things in here. But under here hiding, because it gets very hot, are all my pastels. And they're all in colour order. 
I managed to put them in the sap green because they've got names on them. Um, and I went to London to buy this, to pick it up. So I've got all my pastels in there. Um, but I've had to hide it because it's an original wood. Um, it has a glass top. And then on the top, I have a, all my... Oops, I must have walked a bit, maybe. It's not probably a good place to have it in here. Oh, I have my ink. I might have to take it out of this room. I hadn't realised. I might have to take it out of this room. In the top. Oops, I've got paper on it, but I've got, I've got that thing. Um, I've got my oil paint, um, oil pastels. So I have one tray of oil pastels and all the others are pastels. This is what it's like when I'm working because I don't know what I'm going to work with. So I've got all my pencils. <laughs> so, um, but we do have a nice view, but I'm not normally out there. Um, it's all overgrown is my garden. It's all overgrown and they're buddly of trees. So they're all full of butterflies in the summer. Um, and we don't cut them down. Um, and there is a pond outside, but i um, just going to do that so I don't make it really sick. So my cover book at the other side of the room, I've found them, but uh, there we go. Oh, there's the elf master. Look, melting. Has to be next to me. Has to be next to me. <laughs> yeah, the only thing is you've got to realise it is my studio. It was built for a studio, but it's technically, the girls have said, uh-uh, we want it for a room. So that's why there's the so the other old sofa there. That's the cat sofa at the back. Um, so it's, it's not all mine, unfortunately. It was supposed to be, but it isn't. Um, so I've compromised and I'm in the corner, but yeah, it's a gorgeous room. I don't often come in here, I just lay on the sofa, but I think I'm, I need to come back. <laughs> it, I call it God's God's garden, but Amy goes mad because she, she works hard at it. But I said, no, no, it's really God's garden because he, he puts things where he wants and I let them, I let them be. You see, I, we don't, I don't garden this top bit, so I get into trouble quite a lot. I'm going to try and turn that very slightly. I can't turn it because I've got the. Um, I do that and then put it back. So it's a, it is um it's a good uh, <laughs> yes family it's a good it's a good garden um, and this little bit at the top is mine. So I'm going to try and start to garden a little bit more because I haven't been out there for about three years. So it's it's a bit wild. <laughs> It's a bit wild. Um, so I kind of like her hair. Again, I can put some darks in if I want to go back. I can put a few more darks in. Um, I can put a few darks in. She's got a, a ribbon in her hair. Again, this is this this is the ten zero. I think isn't the two. This is quite small, almost the same as a ten zero, and that's what you want for a watercolor effect for that little bow. So we'll do that next. Um, it's not perfect having these on your knee because they do tip up. Um, so that was going to be a yellow flower. So she could have a pink. She could have a pink flower. So again, I'm dunking and twisting and touching the colour. And if I do the inside, I'll find out how strong it is. And I never touched, I never looked. I kind of like that. I didn't look to see what colour it was actually, I just kind of dunked. So, and then always got to start again, clean brush, fresh colour, and then you have to go for it to get that watercolour effect. Um, and again, I say once you get used to spaces and sh oops, shapes, it doesn't take long, but definitely need a photocopy practice first because it's easier that way. Um, I'm still working with quite fine riggers and I'm still working with my little pot of water, but my baby wipe now needs wringing out because um, I'll show you the pot. I'm right next to the internet. 
Um, so that's the pot of water. And my baby wipe now is quite saturated. So it wants to squeeze. So if you're only one, you've only got that water, that's quite good. But I always have um, some drink anyway, so a drink of water with me. So put that back under there. So really you want a table, so that's all. So again, it's a lovely way to work and you can, can do it in the best car and nobody's going to shout at you. So she's got a pretty dress. I think I might, I'm tempted to do, oh, I've got this pink there. Again, look at my colours at the pinks and see what we've got. We've got, um, so the what one I used was 530. Five thirty was crimson, so that's the colour I did her hair. But I think I might be tempted to do. But I have seen that one, which is five twenty. So five twenty is cherry uh, is pink carmine. No, I think I like. Oh no, I think pink pink carmine's nice. So we'll, this is the colour scheme of the dress, rather than that. Oh, I don't know. I kind of like that. Yeah, I'm going to do it the same as her because she would have a bow to, make, to match her hair. But I can't do it with this. I can do that, that one. But again, you've got to look at the size that you're looking at. I do have all the windows open. You've got to look at the size. So that brush was fine for there, but it won't do a highlight there um so i need to take that back i don't want the biggest brush but i do i do want like a number one brush it's got to be damp and it's got to be able to carry that color so again and i know you think it's a bit of a faff and it is a bit of a faff but when you think you've actually got a watercolor effect on a thin piece of paper it's quite good. So we're going to start quite dark and then and I've got, I happen to have a dog hair on there. So that's not helping. So I'm going to do that again because I actually want it to be quite dark. So we've got about five. And then just keep taking that down. So when we turn that over, she has a lovely highlight on her shoulder. And I'm going to do the same with this one. I think it's because it's very warm here. The brushes are not staying damp enough quick. Normally, this wouldn't dry out quite so much. And there was a bit of dress somewhere else as well, I think. And then we've got a frill. So I think we'll do the frill underneath dark. Hope you can see okay guys. I don't know how Alfie in his fur coat is coping in here because it's very, very warm. And then I'm going to swap to the little tiny brush again, the 10-0, 
I'm, I'm sorry guys, I have to turn it upside down. Because I want a watercolor effect. And I think I've done that wrong, actually. I think, really, the frill should have been the other way, but never mind. So when we turn it like that, she's got a little bit of something going on. Snow was not the best. You can't always get it exact. Oh, yes, Dara says she always turns us upside down. It's the only way, because if you're doing this with your brush or this, you, you, you're going to make a mess. You, it, but as if you're doing this, it's a natural curve. You've got full control of this action because that's how we write. But if you're doing this or you're doing that backwards, it's just the only, the only trick to do it, and I did this when I did my degree, is when I wanted a, a square that way, and that was my original painting, so that's the size of it. Uh, when I wanted something that side, I did it with this hand. So if you want a curve this way, you do it with that hand, and if you want a curve that way, you do it with that hand. Um, so that's the only other way to do it. But still, coming downwards, you would need to turn that upside down. So that means she's got quite a nice highlight. Now, you could make this a little bit darker, but that highlight, stands out more because remember your highlights look lighter when there's a dark when they're next to a dark and your darks look darker when they're next to a light so you could in theory do this make a pig's ear of it and then that highlight now has popped out but because i don't want it to bobble I wouldn't do this. I'd go back into there and carry on. But it's okay. I kind of like that. This was a bit of a big space, but I didn't get a bob. I didn't get any kind of buckling at all. It's completely flat, is that? Um, so, you know, I can live with that. Um, so we said the fuchsia pink was going to be these little things up here. So... I'm going to use a small brush and I'm going to do these in, in kind of smaller sections. Oh, thanks, Nigel. <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't realise what he's doing. <laughs> I'm going to just turn it off again for a bit. Thanks, Nigel. And we've got that natural. And again, it's practice the size. So that is enough to do this bit here. But the middle bit probably wants a slightly bigger brush. And it's trying very fast. Normally it's about eight seconds, but if you're looking at this, it's trying a lot faster than that. But I've got a bit of a highlight on there. Unfortunately, the sun's come down now, so it makes that a bit difficult to see. So I'm just going to go with that number one brush, just a bit bigger. So I've got more damp, so I need less paint this time. That's, that's better. Uh, should you be stealing those, Alfie? Alfie, come here, come here. Yes, looked at me and completely ignored me. Mm. 
Now, the other thing we can do is we can make the outside one darker so it makes it round. So we've got a highlight that way, but it also makes it round. So we need the bigger brush that's a bit darker and then we can make that highlight slightly darker and that will make it rounded as well. Now we've gone back to finish all the biscuits. Alfie, I said no. My word, I said no. I'm just bringing a mouthful with me just in case I get hungry. Alfie, I said no. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. No, he's gone straight back. <laughs> oh, that rat bag. It's in the cat biscuit one. Just I have to get him because he's as fat as a pig, is our Alfie. Alfie Cross, get here now. Alfie? Podgy? The podgy boy? Pinching all the cat biscuits? That's naughty. looks like you as if to say me i not to that so i quite like that fuchsia pink but i need to know i need a nice green oh we're going to do these lemon weren't we hope you can see guys what i'm doing i'll zoom in a bit <laughs> and i'll smack your bottom thank you come back honestly I saw him. I saw him on the screen, so I knew he what he was doing. Oh, it's a rat bag. I'll zoom in a bit and see if we can get get it slightly better. Oh, sorry, guys. I did a. I've done a bit of a. So we're going to do these flowers up there. I might be able to nip that did one again. So we can nip that one. No, I can't nip that one. So we've got the yellow flowers and we've got some nice yellow ones. Again, I'm just going to do this. I cannot believe how warm it is in here. It's just not. Got a little bit of a highlight on again. Got to practice, really. Um, here's Frankie. You're going to be a good girl, Frankie. So Frankie actually managed to run down the field and come back when she was called. And after five years, Alfie, no, no, thank you. Why would I want to do that? So we're quite pleased because it means at least we can let one dog off and poddle around the garden. But I might get a bit of a... Uh, either a thin chain or a rope pony lead so that Alfie can sit with me in the, stu in the other studio because he runs off and he, that's how he got run over. So we, 
we cannot risk it with him. He's he's and he's also aggressive as well. So he bites people. <laughs> Nobody can believe Alfie bites, but he uh, he's a nipper. He's a little Rottweiler. So I think I'll do that bit there now. That's the best action to do, light to dark. So you have that beautiful, rich colour going to nothing. Um, and that's what we're aiming for. We don't always get that, but that's what I'm aiming for, is really rich colour down here and then just taking it to a lovely, soft highlight. Oh, delightful girl. Jessie's digging for England. Sorry, guys, I didn't expect you to listen to her digging. <laughs> um, oh, there's another one here down here. Look, I'll do that one. So, oh, yes, Dad, there is a fan. I had it on yesterday, uh, last week. I had it on last week. Um, it's about somewhere. Oh, but, sorry, Hubby's going to come back up in again in a minute. That's half an acre to do, and he's doing this bit. <laughs> so I need to pick a nice, a nice green. Oh, there's some more petals there. Look. I've got any more stray flowers. I don't think I have. Oh, Jesse Doodles. So now I need a nice green for the for the bee. Um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do 550. I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna do 550. Those you do need your hand resting on something really to to get a nice watercolor effect. Um, I kind of like that one, so I'm going to do the one up there. I'll drop this down. Oh, I can't, okay. Now. Thank you. 
the brush is drying very quickly in here. I kind of like that green. I'm not sure if I want it for all of them, but I'll put it on that one. And here as well. So Manage a nice watercolor effect on that one, but Alfie, come here, please. Alfie, good boy. Good boy. Alfie, good boy. I actually kind of like this leaf, so I might, this colour, just carry on. I can just get to know a little bit of water. So the bigger leaves, I'm going to have to do a bigger colour, bigger brush rather. still see guys I hope it's not just a blur I don't know why the dogs are obsessed with drinking out of the cat bowl. I've got two water dishes, one in the lounge and one in here. And they have a big stand-up one so they don't have to squat. It's a, it's a high dog one, for, especially for dogs, so they don't have to lean over when they're drinking. And they drink out of the cat one, which is a plastic Tupperware box. Just no logic. <laughs> Might have to have a, a bigger brush for these big, these two big leaves. Just won't, won't cut mustard out. It won't take long to get this kind of oops watercolor effect at all. Once you, if it wasn't too warm, that would be it.
Oh, we've got a breeze coming now. That's been nice. So I've got a bit of a, a watercolour effect on the leaves. I've missed two because there's two at there. Again, the bigger brush, you get the colour, but you, you not always get the watercolour effect. And it's a sheet. Something quite nice going to almost nothing. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this mushroom. It is, it is a mushroom. Oh, it's not his purse. It's a pink, it's a pink, it's a purse. Ooh. That's going to have to be a pink, isn't it? It's got to be a pink. I wonder if I could do it in her pink. But it can't be red because that will clash. It could be... It could be blue, as in um, French ultramarine blue. Uh, come away, please. She'll box your ears. Alfie, Alfie. Alfie, Alfie. Get him now. I'm frightened to he, um, she'll scratch her eyes out. He, then you'll know about it. Good girl, Jessie. Jessie Doodles. So worried that he um, she scratches his eyes out. The other cats, but she's still a little. Oh, my! Did you need to do that? Hey, Jesse, you're gonna have to box him. Alfie Cross, right? Get here now, my word! Lie down. That's naughty. That's naughty. Do you want to go in the kitchen? You don't do that to pussy cats, do you? He doesn't do it with the others. He does it because she runs and he likes to play tick. She'll box your ears. I'm really worried about his eyes because he's all eyes. And he's daft as well, so that's doesn't help. Um, we've got some really nice reds in this set, so I'm just going to have a... Let's see if I can put that back up there. I may have to give up then, guys, because the, the, the light's going, the sun's coming round, and right. We've got some quite nice reds, but I, I do like these two colours. I think maybe a, um, a, a pink red rather than a, a cooler red because we've got a little ladybird there. Um, I didn't really want in your face, but there's some really nice purples and pinks here. Hot red, but then of course I've got, I've got the pink now. So I was going to look up as a mauve. I didn't use mauve. I used um, violet. Oh, no, I didn't. Yes, I used violet. So I could I could make it a blue bag. Blue, oh, I've got a blue tassel. But maybe she was putting a blue tassel on the on the purse. Lagoon is a nice deep purple. It's a blue purple. I might use that one. Oh, thank you, Pamela. Oh, hi Patricia. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. Anybody else popping in? Um, I think I'm going to go for Lagoon, which is 810. So 810. I put little tags on mine. Now you can make watercolour washes with these. That's why I've got little wells there if anybody's got these. Um, there's, I've done one in there that one has been scraping. Um, so I said 810. Eight ten is Lagoon. 
I shall hold that one because I'm going to be using it a lot. So I'm going to have to go sweep all the way up here. So, um, of course, what have I just done? But I've just put it in its clamps. So I need it that way around because... And I'll zoom out a bit and then you can see what I'm doing. Sorry, guys, it's getting a bit messy in the corner now. So you better to be able to see. The sun's coming round, so it's getting a bit silly now. But I'm going to be sweeping up there. Um, I'm going to do the green because I've just realised if I get up here, I might get a bit confused. So if I do, I do the leaf. The leaves. Um, and I've got a blue lagoon, so I think I might do a a darker, a darker blue. Look at this I want to do that a little bit darker next time. It's a bit wet now, so I shall let that dry, then I'll go over it again. Again, it's a bit of an unnatural. I can do that yep. first underneath. So thanks for stopping by guys I hope you're having a pleasant afternoon evening or morning it depends where you are on the on the planet and thanks for watching on YouTube if you've got any comments you want to see anything that I've not done or repeat anything I do try to repeat myself if I can. But we tend to have lots of distractions around here with the the Alfie. So I kind of like that. Um, So, what else have we got? I'll leave that one out because I kind of like that leaf. And then I've got this blue lagoon 810. So, again, I don't want to be working in there because I need that to tell me what colour it is. Um, because they're very strong and they're very dark, these colours. So, where it says England, I'm making a little well in there. And, and then I'm going to be going quite. I need the bigger brush, I think, for this. I want to be kind of quite strong. Alfie sees aeroplanes and he wants to bite people. <laughs> yeah, I need the bigger brush for this. This is the number six. I need the big brush for this one. So you can practice how much you need. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do it in a sweeping motion, I think. So I'm gonna have a lot of colour. Um, 
Oops. Sweeping down and then colour. Kind of sweeping up. You may not get this the first time, so we may have to do another layer, but not today because it's too it's too wet. We'll have to do that tomorrow. So we come up to there. And then it is quite wet this. Sorry, it's on its side, guys. It's just you do need that sweeping motion, but because it is an ink, it, it doesn't like you to stop. If you did this with the watercolors, uh, the art bars, it wouldn't do this, you wouldn't have any problems because this is an ink base, it's, it doesn't always behave itself. You're going back to finish those biscuits, Alfie. Big spaces are always a bit tricky because you don't really want a lot of wet because it'll buckle your page. This is a very large brush, this. So. to work fairly quick 
but you don't really want. Sunshine's gone. That should make everything clearer. <laughs> Sorry, guys, the sunshine's playing havoc with everything today. If it's too wet, you can nip it between your hands. That's what I normally do, but obviously I haven't got a spare hand. If it is too wet, I used to nip it. So it's not brilliant, but there's a bit of a highlight on it, so I can go over it. Um, it's a bit buckled, so I want it to dry, and then I can go back over it and, and make it rounder that way and rounder that way, so um, darken these up a bit. But I don't want to put any more water on it at the minute because it's a bit too wet and it'll crinkle. <laughs> so... Um, we want a little gold clasp, and I've missed a leaf off there. I've missed a leaf off there. So that's what she looks like so far. So it's quite nice. And again, I love the fact that we are so strong colours. And then we go to some really nice pale colours. So you can get that bit of a highlight effect. Um, I will lose these uh, lamp and lantern hi highlights hitting things. Um, but I don't tend to work that way. I tend to, I can't work with pencils like that. So um, it's not something that I, I normally would do. I've missed that leaf as well. And that's the wrong leaf. Isn't it? If I'd have done a smaller leaf, I could have had a watercolour effect. But I'm conscious of the time. Oh, I think the dogs are trapped in this room. I've just heard Bungle talk. Green that I did before. And again, if it's too wet, you can nip it and turn it and nip it and turn it. And then you'll be able to do your watercolour effect. It won't be so wet, you won't be able to use it. So 
Again, I kind of like that idea. I seem to have got some cat <laughs> trying to get Where's the pussy cat trying to get in? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, guys. I have to show you this. I have to show you this. There's one waving to come in, Bungle, and Jesse's waving to go out. I don't know if you can see Bungle. There's a pair of paws appearing. Bungle's trying to get in. And Jesse's looking at him, going, Yeah, okay, then. Yeah, there you go. Bungle's got long hair. I don't know, oops, sorry guys, I don't know why I come into this room. He's, he's long haired, but he wants to get into this room. <laughs> There's Alfie. Look, being a good boy now, aren't you? Let's cool down a bit now. The light's gone. Oh, we've clouded over, so that's that's slightly better. Oops, so that's where we are so far. If we're Not quite finished. Um, it's not quite finished. I've got one or two little bits. I'd like to have finished it, but I'm, I'm vastly running out of time. Um, oh, the sun's come back again, guys. It, it's really not. I haven't quite grasped this yet. I haven't quite got this sorted yet um especially when the evening sun of course it comes right round um so i need a bit of a a thing for there and some grease but it's almost finished it's almost finished um most of it's done there's a few of the green leaves which i will do um and there's a little bit of gold i'm going to do on the purse and then we've got butterfly wings and two little butterflies there and a little one there. So probably about another half an hour um, and it would be finished. It's just I'm conscious of the fact that it's tea time. Everybody, that's what bu bun wrong with Bungle. It's tea time. It, he wants feed. <laughs> it's feeding time. It's always feeding time at the zoo here. Yeah. Um, and I'm saying, but conscious of the fact that they... Let's see if we can. I could finish it. Oh, thank you, Pamela. Thank you. Oh, welcome back. Thank you for popping in. Oh, thank you, me. Thank you. It. I do like the ink tens when you use them like this because they're so so strong very much like the peerless ones but because of the, the the presumably the binder that they've used it's more like a pastel whereas neos and the hydras um you can get strong colors but it's nice to get this really rich color going to a very pale color um and i i like to do that i like it. it's and it's a bit different and it's slightly easier with the ink tense block um, it is nice. And you can also scratch the colours together like you can with the others. You don't have to use them touching them. You can actually pick them up and, and scratch them. So I could have scratched colour up here. Um, I might do one next week. Scratch colour up here and then use the brush. Um, I think that's what I did with the cat one. Um, there's one about the, with the cats. Um, in the Hannah Carlson, and that's one that I did like that. But I kind of like the colours. 
they probably want a bit, it's a bit wishy-washy, but it is a bit like a watercolour effect. So, of course, that's what I was going for. Um, I like some pale colours. And yet this one is very similar, uh, but it's watercolours. And so you don't get the strongest strong colour, but you do get a watercolour effect. Um, then you can have a very strong effect like this one at this side. Or you can have a touch and go uh, where you don't get a particular pale, but you don't get a particular dark. Um, pastels are quite nice because you can do that with. That's what we did earlier with the pastels. The, um, the blackberries are always lovely with pastels with three colours. Use three tones. But this one, because you've got that really deep colour and you take that to nothing, the contrast is is nicer, if that makes any sense. So um, I'm going to try and finish this off because I'm terrible at finishing things. But I do want a smaller brush now. I don't need a bigger brush for that. I haven't done the lanterns. Um, I'll leave the lanterns white because I'm not sure what to do with them. I do need to do the inside of this shoe. Um, And normally it's a paler colour. But again, I'm not sure whether to, to, to do them a pale colour or... Um, and we have a butterfly here. And again, small spaces now, so I don't really need this big this big rigger. I need to revert, revert back to my little ones that are here. So they're all kind of here that I'm picking out. This seems a good one. This is the number one rigger. So I'll probably use that one. I put that lower down actually, the, the line might be slightly better. So I need um, the little bugs. Oh, I may not get it finished guys, it's feeding time at the zoo. <laughs> so thanks for stopping by. Um, I will finish it and now I'll, I'll show the picture at the end because I'll finish it now. But I hope he's going to come in and, and feed the, the animals so it's going to get quite noisy. So thanks for stopping by, guys. I have a wonderful afternoon. So that was the Intense Blocks um, in Tenderful Enchantments by Carla Clara McCover. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful day.